Hello, happy Friday. Oh my word, I keep forgetting my microphone. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Get the now. Happy Friday, everyone. Here we are, the end of boot camp. Last day, way to go. You made it this far. Right. All right, it's another like jam packed session. Another jam packed session. It's, uh, I got a lot for you today. <laughs> it's gonna be awesome. Okay, um, let's pray and then I'm gonna dig in and we're just gonna hit the road running here. Lord Jesus, we just praise you and thank you for Fridays. We thank you, Lord, for boot camp and what you have provided here, Lord, the truths that you've given and shared. And I pray, Father God, that you would help. Help today be my words, Lord. Um, may, may it be you that's heard today, Father. And may this truth just fully resonate. And can I just pray that the women that are here would actually apply all of the things and walk out this afternoon in victory. Amen. Okay, here we go. So, uh, do you have your worksheets? If you don't have your worksheets, that's fine, but you're probably gonna want some pen and paper to take some good notes, because I got a lot coming at you today. It's good stuff. Um, what is victorious living? Being confident of our identity and purpose, right? And walking out in the victory that God already has given us. Uh, we talked Monday about being and doing and the importance of being um, who, and knowing who we are in Christ and who God has made us to be. And then we go forth and we do all of the things. And scriptures does not contradict each other. We are to go fight the good fight. And we are also called to be still. And so we can do that through Christ. We also looked at truth versus facts, how truth and facts are not the same. Facts give us um, a look at our circumstances. Uh, truth gives us a eternal perspective from the air so we can fight the air battle and not the ground battle. Uh, we also talked about renewing the mind a lot the last two days. Uh, and you were given a lot of practical tips on renewing the mind. I hope you loved them. They're like my favorite. Okay, so today we're going to talk about, well, listen, we know that knowing our value is key to living victoriously, right? We have to know how valuable we really are, but in knowing our own value, you guys, we also are able to acknowledge the value of somebody else, right? When we know who we are in Christ, comparison is a non-issue. We're not comparing. I remember this season of my life where God was really solidifying this belief in me. Like I knew, oh, I knew that I was, so, I know, <laughs> that I'm so deeply, deeply loved by Christ that I um, am so valuable and there was nothing I could do to change my value. Uh, and, and honestly, I knew that I was God's favorite. I just knew how, how cherished I was. And then, of course, he comes up and reveals in different parts of scripture that God does not show favoritism. Acts 10, 34, Romans 2, 11, Galatians 2, 6, it says plainly, God does not show favoritism. So this got me thinking, okay, so now I know what I know is real. I know that I'm God's favorite. But if that's how valuable and how he feels about me, that means he thinks that same way, he feels that same way about everybody else all all his children all his people he feels this way about them he loves them this much and so in knowing that and experiencing how much he loves me i started just viewing other people 
differently, valuing them more, appreciating them more. I just love how this works, how God does this. You know, celebrating others is easier, right? Admiring others and celebrating others. Giving grace is easier. It's easier to give grace because you, you've, you've come to terms with your own flesh and your own weakness, knowing what God can do despite them and with them. Then, and, and you experience that grace yourself, then it's just, you can start giving that grace to other people as well. It's just really valuing what others can bring to the table because you are so confident in what you can bring. It's so easy to value what they bring as well. Listen, believing that you have value is not vanity, it's maturity. It's maturity knowing how valuable you are and that with that maturity comes this appreciation for others. So as we are going through this life, um, we're going to encounter battles. We're in enemy territory, <laughs> right? The battles of life are real. So let's look at how we can fight these battles from the place of victory. Uh, so there's a few things that happen in the military when they get dropped off in enemy territory. Uh, they ask three questions. Where are you? Where is your enemy? And where is your buddy? Three things they ask themselves. So we here, we're in enemy territory, right? The world is like Satan's playground here, right? We're not in the heavenly realms yet. And so we need to ask ourselves these questions. Where are you? Where am I? What season are you in? It's important for us to acknowledge what season we're in while we're trying to walk out in victory. Because there's different seasons of life and we go through um, different chapters and so we're going to experience God, we're going to experience life differently in different seasons and we're going to experience victory. It's going to look different in different seasons. Uh, Psalm 1-2 says, Blessed is the one who del whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither, whatever they do prospers. And if you notice, it says, yields its fruit in season. So there's going to be seasons where you're not yielding a lot of fruit, and it's a lot of internal victories that are happening. And we have to acknowledge that, or we're going to be looking for our victories and our circumstances or in these tangible ways um, when really we're in winter. And, and the victories are all going to be internal and you're not going to see it externally. Does that make sense? Uh, in spring, you're going to see some of those tangible blooms. You're going to see some of those tangible um, fruit, right? You're going to see that victory in a different way. So acknowledging what season we're in is going to be crucial to knowing whether we're walking in victory or not and experiencing that victory well and not expecting ourselves to to bear blooms in winter you know um so there's i have a whole teaching on that i did a teaching on that um a few months ago a month or so ago in the soul trading group if you want some more info on it figuring out what season you're in that's in the soul training facebook group once you become a training member, that's totally available to you. So, but you can figure that out. Where, where are you? What season are you in? The next question is, where is your enemy? Listen, we've got three enemies out there and we don't want to be um, focusing our energy on the wrong enemy and being attacked 
by a different one, right? We want to make sure that we're looking in the face where we need to be fighting and that our energy is focused in the right direction. So three enemies. One is the flesh. We have this flesh. We live in this flesh and I know it's annoying. We receive this new man when we receive Christ, but there is still this old man that we have to deal with. Oh good, I'm still there. Sorry about that. Um, Romans 7 talks, Paul talks about, it's, you know, the do-do verse where he doesn't do what he wants to do. He does what he doesn't want to do because there's this battle with the flesh, right? Um, the flesh is like a, the savage inside of us that does whatever it wants without considering the consequences. Um, okay. I'm going to read you some scripture, but I didn't write... <laughs> write the address. Okay. So I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost sens all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity and they're full of greed. That, however, is not the way of life you learned when you heard about Christ and you were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regards to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires to be made new in the attitude of your mind and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. savage of the flesh, right? I know you can relate to this. You know, when we just kind of give in and just do the things no matter what, you know, this is, this is my temptation when I am around tortilla chips, you know, tortilla chips, man. Um, <laughs> I can go at them like a savage. My flesh will just, okay. But that's like, a small, uh, just a small example of what, you know, when we let our flesh overtake us. All right. So then our second enemy, I will put uh, the address of that um, scripture in the notes. So that'll come up in after. So our second enemy is the world. In 2 John 3, 17, it says, Many deceivers who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming into the flesh have gone out into the world. And any such person as this deceiver and the Antichrist, watch out that you do not lose what we have worked for, but that you may be fully rewarded. Anyone who runs ahead and does not continue in the teachings of Christ does not have God. Whoever chooses, continues in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. Um, Matthew 7, 13 and 14. I love how the message translates this. It says, don't look for shortcuts to God. The market is flooded with surefire, easygoing formulas for a successful life that can be practiced in your spare time. Don't fall for that stuff. Even though crowds of people do, the way to life, to God, is vigorous and requires total attention. The world, the world will distract us and it will be so easy to fall in line with what everybody else is doing. You have to stay focused. Uh, Satan is our third enemy. Uh, we talked about this a little bit when we were talking about the ground battle versus the air battle. Satan, the father of lies, he is the ultimate deceiver. And Ephesians 6 says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers against the authorities against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms okay john 10 10 says the thief satan comes to steal kill and destroy i have come that they may have life and have it to the full okay but uh, let's look at what satan is doing here he comes to steal that word is klepto, like obsessed with stealing and pickpocketing. He likes to pick, pickpocket. And so he will distract us. 
He likes to distract us by things of the world. And before we know it, all of a sudden our peace is gone. Our joy is gone. He's just stolen it from us while we were distracted with things of the world or indulging in our flesh or uh, whatever he can do to distract us, fighting things on the ground battle, wanting to control all of our circumstances or other people's circumstances. He'll distract us with those things. And all of a sudden we've lost our peace, our joy, uh, things that God has given us. Now, what he can't steal, he comes to kill, right? He comes to kill, steal, kill, and destroy. So killing here in this verse, uh, Greek-wise, it, it's the word for sacrifice. So, you know, Satan doesn't have the power to kill anything. He is not that powerful. <laughs> like, he cannot come and take over um, your eternity. Okay? He doesn't have that power. You have power over your eternity. But what he will do is if he can't steal something from you, he will get you to sacrifice it. He will get you to sacrifice it. He will help he'll get you to try to buy into a lie and say, "Oh, I'm not worthy of that. Here it is." You know, to to just willingly give it up to agree with the fear to agree with a lie and then just give him, give him our peace, give him our joy. Give him the victory. Sneaky bastard. And then he comes to destroy. He wants to get you so obsessed with that ground battle that you just, that we just destroy ourselves, right? So we just get so obsessed with the circumstances and with the temporary things of the world. All right. So those are the enemies that we need to be on on lookout for. Where's our buddy? That's the next question we need to ask. Hebrews 10, 25 says, don't stop meeting together with other believers, which some people have gotten into the habit of doing. Instead, encourage each other, especially as you see the day of faith, day drawing near. We need each other. We need to get each other's backs. And that's why it's so important to be confident in our value and and see other people's value. This is is so important. Um, The shield of faith, when God talks about, um, when, when God talks about the armor of God, Paul brings that up and he goes through the armor of God. Uh, You know, there are seasons in life where our faith will be shaken. And to have a sister or brother beside you who can help you have faith and who can help guard you, the shield of faith guards against the flaming arrows of the evil one, correct? And so in the the Roman shields during that time, what, what they would do is they would form a circle and put their shields on the outer side of the circle and the shields would hook together. And so you're not standing there with your own faith trying to ward off all the, the flaming arrows. No, you've got a brother or sister beside you that you can lock into their faith and use some of their faith to support your own. Gosh, it's a beautiful picture. Beautiful picture. So... Those are three things that we need to be aware of as we're in this enemy territory. <sighs> okay, you guys, I really want, I want to get into the word with you for a minute here. Um, I know I'm coming out with you with a lot of information. Uh, I know that this has been, well, kind of pretty hardcore, but I'm not going to feel bad about it because this is called a boot camp. And when you hear the word boot camp, you're not thinking, oh, this is going to be easy, right? No, I know this is, this is like not super easy stuff, but it's boot camp. That's what you're here for, right? So we're going to dig into um, the gospel of John. Now, I want to say that the, this is kind of, this boot camp is kind of a, like a, you get a taste of my teaching style and um, the way, the way that I am, <laughs> I am and 
uh, what training in the truth looks like. But in the membership, in the training sh membership, um, you've got cr the Crown and Sword e-course. And the Crown and Sword e-course is well, we're going to dig into the scripture and kind of break it down a little bit, but in the e-course you get worksheets and you get a message for crown and sword breaks apart 2 Timothy 1.7 in, into four parts. So you have about like four modules um, and the first one is tackling the spirit of fear. The second one tackles the, sp the spirit of power. The third spirit of love and the fourth is the spirit of discipline. And so you get, there's a, like a message, a teaching that's 25 to 45 minutes for each one of those modules. And then you'll get chapters where there's like the chapter introduction and then you have prompts. So digging, dip, dig, dipping, digging deeper prompts that will assign you with a scripture. And then uh, you gotta read the scripture. And then there's prompts to help you kind of wrestle some things out with the Lord about that scripture and really solidify some things. So this is what the, the worksheets are. It's like this. And then in the digging deeper, you get a scripture and then you have some prompts. Now the soul training is a little bit different in the, in the fact that um, you get kind of coached through the digging deepers. Like we will tackle a, uh, verse together. We're going to tackle the verse together and uh, I walk through the wrestling with you. <laughs> so uh, you get, we have a theme verse that we'll go through. We do the warm up on Mondays because context is everything. So we look at our verse in context because we don't want to take a scripture uh, and just start learning it without studying where it's at in the context. Like we want to know that we're studying the right thing and, and practicing the right thing, right? We're going to test it. Uh, so we do that in the warm ups, and then core conditioning Wednesday video. When we meet up, we, we strengthen the core. We strengthen our core values and our core beliefs with, with this scripture. And then Fridays is fat burn Fridays and we acknowledge lies. We acknowledge the lies that we might be coming up against and fight against them. And then there's the stretches, which are the journaling prompts that you get to do on your own. So that's what is all in the membership. But so we're going to dig into John five really quick, but in the conclusion here, because this is so cool. All right, John 5, 1 through 11. It says, Some time later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish, Jewish festivals. Now there is in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate a pool, which in Aramaic, or Aramaic is called Bathsheba, and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him laying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. And while I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. And then Jesus said, get up, pick up your mat and walk. At once the man was cured, he picked up his mat and walked. All right, so we're gonna break the scripture down a little bit. I don't have a lot of time, so we're gonna kind of make it fast. But here we can see that this man was laying there for 38 years years. That's a long time. That's a long time to be sitting in defeat and laying in some place, right? And, and Jesus sees him and what does he say? He asks him a question. He says, 
Do you want to get well? Do you want to? Do you even want to get well? Because you're just sitting here. Do you want to change? Do you, sister, do you want to change? Do you want healing in your life? Are there places you want to stop living in defeat on the daily? Do you want to get well? All right, the invalid replies, I have no one to help me. I have no one to help me. Are you waiting for someone else to show up in your life? You living in the victory that God gives is no one else's responsibility but yours. This is your responsibility. Listen, ladies, God has done his part. We have to do ours. Do we want to? He continues and he says, when the water gets stirred, when the water gets stirred, and this is believed to be the time where there is this healing powers in these pools, right? Is when there's this stirring of the water. It's, it was said that an angel came down and stirred it with like healing powers. And so that's why all of these um, crippled people were waiting for the angel to come and stir up the waters. But I wanna ask, are you waiting? for a magical time to start showing up in your life. Waiting for a new year, a new week, just to start making the changes that you want in your your life. Or even tomorrow, are you waiting for tomorrow? Is it this keep, uh, oh, I'll start tomorrow. We mess up, oh, I'll start again tomorrow. The rest of this day, I'll just count as crap, right? I'm just gonna live in the defeat the rest of the day. I'll start living in victory tomorrow. (laughs) No, don't wait. We have it available to us right now. How about we start making decisions to show up now? You know, indecision is a decision. Waiting around. The life is gonna keep going. It's gonna keep happening whether we decide to be defeated or live in victory. We get to decide. We get to decide how we experience each of the minutes in our life. Okay, the next thing this man says is, while I'm trying to get in, someone else goes on ahead of me. Someone else goes on ahead. I can't. Blame shifting, blame sh- Okay, my friend Julie and I used to watch this sh- this movie. I think it was The Mexican with Brad Pitt and Jen. Oh gosh, I, I'm totally blanking on her name. Jennifer, anyway. <laughs> it's this married couple that's going through therapy and they got, they're getting in, in fights a lot and she constantly goes, blame shifter, blame shifter. <laughs> Anyway, it makes me think, blame shifting. We're blame shifting. We gotta own our lives. We've gotta take responsibility for the decisions we make. No blame shifting, you guys. And then what about the comparison? Oh, they, they're doing it. They, they're doing it. I can't, I'm laying here. I can't get ahead of them. I can't do it. But what if we stopped comparing and we chose to be in Inspired by other people instead of envious of them. Ah, they can do it. I can do it too. They can do it. They got healed. I can get healed. So these are the things that this man is saying to Jesus. These are his excuses, really, right? Acknowledging where he's at. Yes, I want to to be healed, but 
do you really, do you really want to be healed? Jesus says, then Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your mat and walk. All right, girl, where is God asking you to get up? Yes, being, being his, knowing how to rest, value, knowing our value and our identity in Christ. The being is crucial to living in victory. It's critical. But listen, God gives us this royal authority, this regal identity. He equips us with this almighty power so that we can go do, so that we can get up, that we can be healed, so that we can pick up our mats and walk and make an impact in this eternal kingdom and live a victorious life. So I'm asking you, where do you need to pick up your mat and start walking? What do you think? Ah, you guys, I am so, so eager to see the church walking victoriously in this world. Really walking victoriously. You know, John 16, 33 says, I have told you these things so that in me, you may have peace. In this world, you're going to have trouble. You will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. He has overcome for us. We can walk in that. Okay, ladies, go out and get it. Get to it. Walk out your life in victory. You have everything you need. Everything you need. Please, if you have any questions or if you want help kind of hashing any of this stuff out, uh, shoot me a message or make a comment. I would, I would love to talk more about it. All right, you guys. I'm out of here. I know it's been so long, but I hope you loved it all of it.